All right, so Toronto's had a very busy afternoon today. The Toronto Maple Leafs have acquired defenseman Mark Giordano from the Seattle Kraken, along with Colin Blackwell. And in exchange, going back to Seattle is a 2022 second round pick, a 2023 second round pick, and a 2024 third round pick. The Seattle Kraken also retained 50% of Mark Giordano's salary. And Giordano going to the Leafs was kind of the worst kept secret over the last few weeks. Uh, Kyle Dubas, I, I knew he was going to pull it off, I just wasn't sure how. Uh, this guy always finds a way for a GM of a cash-strapped team, and when I say cash-strapped, I don't mean um, that they can't spend if they wanted to, they're just right up against the salary cap. He just finds a way to pull these moves off, and obviously he gets Seattle to retain 50% of the salary, and he doesn't overpay, even though I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not upset with the return that the Seattle Kraken are getting here, I still think they're getting a decent return. But I think Ron Francis would have found a way to get a first round pick out of a lot of other GMs. Kyle Dubas stood his ground. And this guy, he makes a lot of really underratedly good trades. Yeah, there's a few bad ones in there. Maybe the Nick Felino one last year wasn't a great one. I think uh, Leafs fans would like to forget about that. Now, what are they getting to Mark Giordano? Obviously, leadership, um, you know, good defensive defenseman too. Yeah, maybe he's not the Giordano of, uh, you know, two, three, four years ago when he was contending for Norris trophies, but still, very good player, very serviceable player. He's 38 years old, so he's definitely the definition of a grizzled veteran. Once again, the offensive numbers, maybe not what they used to be. Uh, Mark Giordano, still very serviceable in his own zone. But the thing is with the Leafs, you know, is their goaltending going to be good enough? Now, they've made a few other moves today, and those moves are, they put Peter Morazic on waivers, uh, that's definitely a salary cap move and a little bit performance wise too. I think Morazic obviously was not very good uh, Especially over the last few months Travis Dermott was shipped off to Vancouver in exchange for a third round pick and the Leafs signed goaltender Harry Sateri One of my favorite names to say for sure from the KHL this guy played nine games for the Florida Panthers um, back in the 17-18 season he had four wins but I, I don't think Harry Sateri is going to be the guy that's going to take them to the promised land. I think that's going to be, um, you know, more... It's got to be Jack Campbell. I mean, they, they really don't have any other choice. Let's be honest. Jack Campbell, uh, you know, when he comes back from injury, he's got to play up to the way he was playing in November. I mean, if they don't get that type of goaltending, they're going to be gone in the first round once again. And if Campbell can play the way that he did in November... I think the Leafs have just as good of a shot as any to knock off a team like Tampa Bay, to knock off a team like Florida, who, you know, the Panthers themselves aren't exactly set in net. Uh, you know, you look at Bobrovsky, is always good for a soft goal every now and then, it seems like. Spencer Knight, while he has been looking pretty good lately, there's been question marks about him as well. Colin Blackwell, that's a guy that's going to round out the fourth line for Toronto. I think he's a good little player. Uh, you know, he works hard. He's got good speed. Maybe not the most talented guy in the world, but he's tenacious and he's fast, so a real Kyle Dubas, Toronto Maple Leafs type of player. All right, now let's talk about maybe a not-so-big trade, but one that the Ottawa Senators made. Travis Hamnick goes to Ottawa from Vancouver in exchange for a third-round pick in 2022. This one is confusing for me. Um, you know, Travis Hamnick, now I've heard people saying, uh, or I saw people saying that, like, you know, He's Josh Brown 2.0. He's better than Josh Brown. I mean, come on, let's not let's not be over the top here. I think he's definitely going to be an upgrade over Josh Brown. Now, with that being said, I don't think he's, you know, going to exactly be uh, what the Sens need to fix their defensive problems. One thing Hamnick does have is a booming slap shot, which he hasn't used too much in recent years, considering his goal scoring isn't that great. I don't get it. So the Sens take on Travis Hamnick, who has a cap hit of $3 million. Um, they're going to pay him just over $3 million for next year, with signing bonuses included. He does have one more year left on his contract. But yet they're giving Nick Paul and his camp a hard time in contract negotiations. Uh, apparently the Sens' final offer was $2.5 million for four years, $2.5 million uh, per year for four years. And Nick Paul wanted around three. Now, Nick Paul is not worth $3 million, in my opinion. But if you're Ottawa, why do you bring in a guy in Travis Hamnick who's not worth $3 million either, right? I mean, I don't get that. And for a team that's so hard-pressed for money like the Sens, they always seem to spend on bad players. 
Uh, Eugene Melnick really is a hard guy to figure out sometimes. Now, if their plan with Hamnick is they're going to move on from Josh Brown, they're going to move on from Zaitsev, maybe they buy him out or find someone to take him, uh, you know, in the offseason or even at the trade deadline here. I don't know that anyone will take Zaitsev. Um, you know, Victor Mete is probably not going to be around either next year. Maybe you have Hamannick come in and uh, play a full-time role for the Sens. It still doesn't make sense to me because, I mean, they could have had a guy like Sanderson, uh, JBD, or Lassie Thompson, JBD being Jacob and our docker, of course, or Lassie Thompson come in and fill that role. Um, you don't need to have a guy like Hamnick in there, you know, holding up these young players, these young defensemen from coming onto the Sens roster and making an impact full-time. Uh, guys that I think could easily be better than Travis Hamnick as well. So those are my thoughts on the trades that Ottawa and Toronto made and some of the other moves Toronto made as well. Please let me know what you all think in the comment section below. Also, please like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.